ready to rumble! What's up, everyone? Hello, chess fans and chess 24 nation. All the fans out there, this is your host, Julio Sedora, for another episode of Battle Blitz with the Chess Pac Man. Welcome, welcome to the sixth episode. In this episode, the Chess Pac Man will be more serious about playing games and learning from them. So, if you're ready, to play and learn, let's roll. I've been playing a few games just now and I'm, I got warmed up. I'm pretty warm. Maybe I'm already hot too. So for all of you who showed up early, thank you very much. We apologize for the technical dip difficulties. These things happen and uh, please bear with us. And we know that only those who really want it really want to learn and play the pac-man will stick around so without any delays let me take the next challenge carl don g you know what let's start with don g he's been waiting all right don g we are serious no silliness no singing maybe some humming let's go solid Classical, classical. No crazy chess, no crazy talk, right everyone? When we get really comfortable, maybe we can, but it's risky. So this is the modern defense. Ooh, Carl studied some theory here, huh? Carl knows some theory here. So what shall we do? We shall play some solid developing move. He plays this, e5, I play d5, d7, c3. So this is sort of like a king's Indian defense. Only we already committed the pawn structures. So let me go c5, surprise him a little bit. I go c5, it's a temporary pawn sack because I want to destroy his pawn structure. Okay, I can actually take this if I want to, huh? And now, what I did there is I just opened up the C file and weakened his D6 pawn. Alright, 98 and then F5. So, I'm going to do my best to explain to you my thought process, ideas, and even analysis. But there's going to be a lot. So, don't expect me to tell you everything. But I guarantee you, after this game, we're going to go over it. Got it? In those moments, those critical moments I missed, I'll come back to it. Here we go. At the Kando with the Knight. I think he should have played a6 first to prepare f5. And now f4. I don't, I don't like f4 because now I can play bishop g4. You guys seeing this? And I'm trading the most important, muy importante, most important piece in the King's Indian. And that is the bishop. But now I eliminate it like this. Hmm. And his light squares are weak. D5 square is weak. So is the D6 pawn. But right now the D6 is uh, pretty well defended. Okay. So he wants the E6. We can let him have it. You can have it if you want it. Right? Right? He can have it, right? I think he can. Just kidding. No silliness, okay? Just kidding. It's possible. We can kid a little bit. Kid, kid. Okay, I'm seeing some tricks, so maybe I'll go bishop c4 first. So I was thinking of queen b3, but maybe d5, knight d5, one knight is fine. ed5, knight d4. I'm just avoiding those knight d4. At least here, after d5, ed5, knight d4, I go d6, okay? So he's in a tight spot here tough situation here i tell you guys because what is weak here what can i boom first i can boom the knight on e6 sorry i was a little slow there 
I'm already oh ahead. I'm really ahead of you guys. Uh, I didn't explain it. I was already deciding between Queen B3 and Queen G4. Who votes for Queen B3? Who votes for Queen G4? I vote for Queen G4 because I'm going for a double pin. I pin the king and I pin the queen. Two loose pieces. So here we go. Aha. I'm sorry to do this to you, Don G, but it's coming. It's coming, is it? I think it's coming. I think we can come. Time to say goodbye. Hmm. Interesting. I'll go knight b5. Attacking d6 and c7 square. So when you're attacking, everyone, here's a tip, another tip, right? You gotta invite everybody to the party. The party is happening right here in the center. A little bit to the king's side, but exactly at e6 point. Okay, it's happening here. Only here. Only here. So he wants to play... Eh, I could just play simple chess, right? I just play simple chess. So just do a tactic. The pins I'm exploiting, I'm cashing in. Could have played bishop b4 as well, actually. Yeah, attacking d6. Hmm. So that's an advice for you guys. If you see a good move, look for a better. Oh, thank you, Donji. Thank you. Thank you for participating and showing up here on time early for this show. Thank you. Don G, all right, for everyone and for Don G especially, you know, I'm gonna go over this game. So let's look at the cr critical moments, as I said. Openings, you guys know this. You can take care of this through research and looking at the databases, okay? And C5, it's a common theme um, because if he plays, um, sorry, DC5, now he has a double point in a week, night. E5, e5 pawn here. I can probably take, but I doubt it actually. There's some knight takes d5, knight e4, and uh, gets complicated here. I don't need to complicate like that, you know. It's hanging in the air, so I could probably play queen a4 check, you know. Uh, one of the reasons is that I, I disrupt his harmony, okay. Uh, bishop d7 gets in the way of his pieces. I can also just simply play bishop e3. Okay, weaken him a little bit. B6, now there's, there's a weakness here. Perhaps, perhaps I can take advantage of this by playing knight takes e5. You know, let's see some holes here. Okay, see some holes. So there's, uh, there's definitely benefits here. I think it should be an advantage it's, it's somehow. Okay, somehow it's going to be an advantage. Could be bishop g5, so there's going to be a strong initiative. So that's just one of the ways the game could continue, but Donji continued um, more solid. He played uh, casting. Sometimes when I check, by the way, uh, they go, oh, this is for this line. Sorry, I'm talking about this line, guys. Have you guys seen this? F5, something like this, and then I'd have six. But that's another story. Let's focus on the game. And this, I believe, is a better version of the King's Indian. All right? Because I got C5 in, and I weakened his D6 pawn. Okay? So, I will show you quickly how, you know, the mainline King's Indian goes and you'll see, you appreciate how better this is for white. So, Bishop E3 is a normal uh, defensive move. Another idea perhaps is uh, better is Knight H5, going for Knight F4. Now, if I play G3, he could take advantage of that in different ways. Possibly still F5 or maybe H6, preparing F5, okay? But at least he provokes some weakening on my king's side. And now if knight e knight e8, I played bishop e3, I think best, I believe this is the critical moment, h6. First critical moment, h6. Because after this, this is the first mistake, I was able to seize control of e6 with my knight. And now I just retreat and start attacking this e6 pawn and the light squares now. So if he had played queen c8, here's a typical trick, everyone. everyone you got me? Knight d5. Okay, not exactly working actually if you think about it. You know, no, there's no knight c7, but not that trick. It's this guy here. Okay, very unpleasant.
very unpleasant this pin okay and this keyword okay and then it should win material at some point okay um so that's why he played g7 or knight c7 for that matter and i and here i set up a trap rook c1 okay instead of defending i set up a trap and he took the bait and now i can pin the knight in different ways and it's just a matter of time so the, the next critical moment i believe sort of a critical moment was this i could have built up the pressure by playing bishop b6 b4 i was just concerned about his threat what's his threat say i play this blunder i think okay it's a tactic so i play bishop b4 i t noticed it too late take and just take and uh you should be winning once again all right nevertheless what i did was enough if you guys want to see bishop e6 leads to a winning ending okay this bishop's pretty bad and it's just a matter of time before i win all right that's enough next challenge who wants next poker mocker <laughs> it's a funny name um i want to step it up let's go pawn holder pawn holder you're next will i be white or black i'm white again let's go let's roll i may i may sing a little bit just hum you know but no no major crazy wacky songs you know so there are certain rules against playing energetic pop music on the show so better make sure we were just steady steady and uh sane solid classic classic classical oh he wants a grunfeld mm, fine let's go for it i'm up for it i'm down i'm gonna disturb you with this one the sideline that was played by Gelfand or Anand in their World Championship match. And now here's the key. What is the key? A key, a key, a key? Possibly, possibly, <laughs> I'm trying to recall. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, Julio. Know your theory, Julio. I do. I learned it long ago. I just need to review and practice them, right? Castling. There you go, classical. Classical. What is the key? A key, a key? I see some song requests. Bruno Mars. I'm sorry, guys. No Bruno Mars today. Today is for the classicalists. Class for the traditionalists. For the classical. Hardcore fans of. Banner Blitz. That's what we're talking about. Hardcore fans of Banner Blitz only. This episode is dedicated to those fans and the traditionalists. We can still have some character here. Especially if it's according to the demands of the chest position. That is numero uno. Number one, una una. Okay, demands of the position. Okay, he wants d4. He can have it. He can have it if he wants it. I'm gonna have the the Delroy, as Rousen describes it. The Delroy, Delroy. Du, 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 du. Let's go. Harry the H pawn. That's Simon Williams. It's not mine. D is for. David, I think we could call it David. David. Is this Adidas Chess 24 shirt? Someone asked. No, it's not. It's an academy here in Texas. Chess. This is uh, North Texas Chess Academy. Adidas shirt. That's right. Hmm. I'm just playing according to principles using my advantages what's my advantages active pieces more space doesn't matter much because there's only a few pieces but i am hmm what do we have here 
I don't think it's um thing is doing anything. Bishop is doing much, so I'm gonna keep my bishop. The way I see it, guys, this pass deep on is a long-term advantage, and that's why he's messing me up a little bit. He's trying to confuse me, and he has to create some counterplay here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Challenge accepted. I'm keeping my central pawns intact. And because this is a long term advantage, his number one goal is to block. You hear me? Block it. Block it. So I'm going to play some prophylactic move. Prophylaxis. Yes, prophylaxis. Block these past pawns. And I'm not going to let him block it. That's why I play bishop f4. We gotta keep watch of time. Take good care of our time. Mm. I see what he's doing. Hmm. Tricky. Tricky, trickando, trickando, trickando. I wanna be just as tricky. Fortunately, I can't be as tricky. Okay. Fine. We're gonna play this probably, perhaps. Yeah, we're just gonna play solid. But what to do? What to do, my friends? But just be careful and calculate. Be careful and calculate. Okay, he wants that. You can have it if you want it. You can have it if you want it. Because I'm gonna roll. Right here, right now. I'm gonna roll. I think I can roll like this. Like this, like that. So, he may be a pawn up, but my pass pawn, David, the pass pawn is rolling. Rolling, 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 as the song goes. Rolling, 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 rolling. Haha! Rolling, 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 rolling. I am planning bishop g5. Nope. Yes, possible. I'm also planning d6. That is scary for him. He can go rook a4, trying to get more pawns. But I can just go g3. So I like h4 because it creates a loft for my king. And it also guards against g g6, g5, I guess. Whoa! Provocation! Condensation provocation. He's. I don't know what he's doing. But I'm gonna go here. I'm pushing these pawns. I don't know. I'm not sure if he's in time to stop May. To stop May. Is he in time to stop May? Hmm, let me calculate. Pop, 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 pop. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Take, take. And how is he gonna defend? Oh my goodness. I'm not sure. Atacando. I think we're going for it, guys. I think it's possible. It's possible. This is called Pawn Tower. Pawn Tower. Boom. Boom. It may be a boom boom pack. Who knows? But it's coming. The chess Pac-Man is coming to town. It's coming. How can we do this? How can we do this the best way possible? It's coming to town. It's coming. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Yeah, yeah. Oops. I bet. That's not a legit song. That's a random song. So, I didn't break the rule for today. Thank you, Pawn Holder. Thank you. Thank you, Pawn Holder. Stick around. I'd like you. I'd like to play you again. I'd like to play you again, Pawn Holder. Stick around, please. Thank you for showing up. And making this um show lively especially even in the chat so rewind everyone who wants to learn we're gonna go rewind and go over the game english you know is a pretty flexible opening okay and i would say 
yeah, many top players are using this. And uh, in this game that we played, we transposed to a um, Grunfeld. So Bishop E2 is, uh, you know, the most popular line, you know. Bishop E3 as well. And now I play Bishop E5, Bishop C4. And now here's the rub. Here's the thing. With the Bishop B5, I provoke once again Bishop D7, dis disrupting his harmony. Now he has less pressure on um, D4. It's probably more accurate to play H3 now, you know, more useful, because he was able to quickly get counterplay um, on the D D5. I have a feeling he already equalized, but he probably just has to take on F3 and then take on D4. But here, I think I have a nagging edge, so. Possibly better is bishop b3, you know, but I like this. I really like this um, pass pawn. So objectively better um, could be queen d2, but who knows? So let's go bishop f4. Okay, my idea is to stop him from blockading the pawn with queen d6, bishop e5. You know, e6. These are all uh, possible moves. e6, maybe just d6. All right, so. See, I'm controlling some important squares, but f5, I think, is a good move. It's a pretty good move. It's uh, quite tough. It took a while here to decide. Um, so I want to keep it intact, as I said, during the game. No tactics here yet, guys. It looks like there might be something, but no, everything's under control. So I like queen c8, really coordinating with these pieces. Maybe, yes, maybe king h h one is a normal move, but possibly better is... Bishop g5, starting the counterplay right away. Or, yeah, the, the play, the pressure on e7. So, king h1, take, take. And here, guys, I was just calculating queen d7, but actually it doesn't even work after queen e4. So, any other queen moves, but the most um, crushing move is c4. And see the essence of pawn holder's idea. He's controlling the f1 square. And uh, that's why I'm forced to play the ending. Uh, generally, it should just be a draw this one if he's careful. But he was ambitious and uh, his rook started to get disconnected okay, from the rest of his pieces. And now I make this, this is the point. This is the next critical moment. This is when I was able to create pressure. Uh, probably there's many ways. Bishop g5 was continuing, but principle says pass pawns must be pushed. Okay, and uh, yeah, the, rook f7 is the biggest error, I think. It just helps me push the pawn, so I think best is just rook here, or maybe rook d8, possibly, just go into this. But I like rook a4 because after g3, now he could at least bring his rook behind the pass pawn. It's just all principles I'm, I'm going by, guys, or intuition, okay? And this, my intuition says there's something fishy here, okay? Especially here. I was thinking maybe here, here, and trading off, you know, trading off the pawns, you know. If I go, if I go, if I go rook d1, bishop f8. If he takes, who knows if I'm better here. I have to really, you know, be careful as well. Because if this pass pawn does not make it, and I'm just losing on the queen side. So anyway, the tactics, as you saw, is just a matter of analysis. Next, Carl. I miss you, Carl. Okay, it's been a while. Carl is up next. Oh my goodness, it's my lucky weekend. It's my lucky session because I'm getting white again. E4. Hmm, E4, C6. We have played this. Let me try. Let me try to go Fisher style. Bobby loves to play the King's Indian attack almost against anything. So I'm gonna go Bobby style. Hello Leandro! Smugs2006! Hello! Hello! Carlson Superlight! Hello! Greetings! Greetings to everyone! And I hope you're already picking up some some tips, some things already, as we go over the games and also uh, explain why I play my moves. You know what? Bobby would like 
King's Engine attack here, but because there's D takes E4, D takes E4, I also think Bobby would play this, but I'd rather develop my bishop here to attack the F7 pawn. It's a prophylactic move because I'm preventing knight G F6, the normal developing move. Okay, another prophylactic move. Okay, he wants to go. Hmm. He wants to go knight f6 now. I was just thinking, just being silly. I was daydreaming about g4, g5. No, just play classical chess, right? Hey guys. Um. I'm fighting the urge. I can fight it, but I like this interesting plan. There's different ways set up that why i can take here but i like i would i'm choosing here the fianchetto because i'm ahead in development and when you have that advantage you want to start hitting your opponent with threats real threats okay real threats all right so now i hit him with that i'm gonna now castle okay and probably he's gonna go b5 so i'm gonna play a4 Okay, he's gonna go. I don't know. Could be a useful move to play is a5, so positional play. But uh, I feel like we can already go like this. Go seize the weak squares around this king side. Classical, solido, alright? <laughs> Someone commented, blink rapidly if Chess24 is holding you hostage. Blink rapidly. They're probably commenting on the fact that I blink a lot. You want to know the secret, the reason behind that? It's the stress. Since I was young, I've had that. It's the tick. Not really the tick. It's, I would call it the mannerism. Okay? It is the mannerism. Since I was young, it's just my... The way I cope with stress, you know. <laughs> um, stress coping mechanism, that's what they call it. Right? Alright. So, you guys understand now why I blink a lot? <laughs> I don't want to. I really don't want to, but it happens. <laughs> wish, it, wish it would stop, right? I can try consciously to stop it. But when I'm in the moment, like in the zone, it's just going 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 so what is happening i'm sorry to say guys that uh i just took advantage of my opponent's blunder and that's how i got the advantage i just took advantage of him <laughs> you just took advantage of him okay so i threaten i just i'm just making threats and unfortunately carl lost upon an f7 and got forked on g6 ouch i don't mean to be mean but such is the game someone has to be mean so here now, he's gonna trick me. Bishop takes f2. I don't see anything, I don't see much. Um, knight takes f2, I will just go rook takes f2. But I don't see much here. I'll go take. I don't see the danger, that's what I mean. Based on my analysis, knight takes f7, and f2, rook takes f2, you know, because he's gonna do something funky and uh, crazy with the discovery check i think i can just win material this way okay all right i think this is a decisive advantage because i'm a piece up for nothing he could uh get me with this okay he's being safe he could get me with i was thinking he could get me with the back rank <laughs> rook f8 but now i got all my reinforcements coming rook f1 is coming the knight is coming to e5 and etc etc you know what i'm gonna interpolate okay where are they no i'm not gonna interpolate i just play simple i was thinking of rook f1 but an e4 confuses things so keep it simple stupid as we guys have learned from the first two episodes yes 95 is winning it is a powerful knight in the center i'm threatening all sorts of stuff knight g6 self-explanatory 
you guys know how to win this so it went pretty smooth and easy only because um, black hung up on on f7 just to be honest if it wasn't for that I think uh, he could slowly try to equalize all right um, any questions guys I'm seeing you not you your comments your comments okay yes great game so far guys keep please keep challenging me and keep what i mean is you're always going to challenge me keep giving me some problems and trying to beat me that's how we're gonna you know learn more god's <laughs> hoping for rook a3 yes tanji sense of humor right there is sense of humor on the chessboard. Not many people know this. But we can express this in different ways. He's thinking about how to maybe create counterplay. But I think he should be thinking about not resigning. I didn't say that. <laughs> thinking about defending his king because he's pretty weak. I'm threatening mate in 3. G6. And... Um, this is how it's gonna go. Um, we're up on time. And um, while he's thinking, I think I can back up while he's thinking. No, no, no. We have to respect. We can't. I don't wanna do some analysis. Okay, thank you, Carl. Carl, it was nice playing you again. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Don G, Mikthal, Carlson, Superlight, and the rest. Let's go over this. You know what? This is how we improve. We can't just play, 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 sing, 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 and go nuts. That's why we're making a big change, taking a different style, well, trying out different styles to see what works best for us. And here, Bishop C4, look at this. I mentioned, right? It's for real. I'm not kidding, guys. To make this work, I think he should to a, a change of move order bishop e7 see i'm preventing knight g5 and when i castle or whatever it is b3 then he develops he saves the tempo i think this is the slight inaccuracy playing h6 right away weakens the king side you don't want to weaken your king side especially if you want to castle there if you know you're gonna castle queen side that's well i'm fine and uh, you see how these squares g6 f7 f5 you know when i get to f5 guess what that knight gets there you don't have the g6 you can't push me back because your h6 pawn will drop okay so this happened many times the, the, the different setups i'm choosing between is, is castling a4 or rook f1 and then rook e1 knight f1 okay and the bishop comes to Actually, normally we go to we, we place the bishop on b2, only we do it later, okay? So I did it early, and now there's pressure. Maybe it's more accurate to play queen c7, okay, Carl? Queen c7? Alekin, Alexander Alyohin played this a lot, and queen c7 is a normal move. Bishop d6 makes you nervous a little bit because it's loose. Loose pieces drop off, remember, guys, LPDO. So one of the things I check, of course, is bishop f7, knight c4, but of course it's not going to work yet. Things are not yet ready. Casting, you could consider b5 and then castle because now I prevent you from gaining space on the queen side. And here a normal move, I would say, could be a5, okay, queen c7, knight c bishop c5, you know, knight c5, well, queen c7 first. Rook e8, knight h5, I think uh, it's better to play knight f8. And then trade off the strong piece. What's my strong piece? You don't need a minute to think about that. Bishop e6 is coming. You're gonna get rid of this bishop or an e6. But an e6, you're giving me a, an outpost on f5 temporarily. So now I play maybe queen e2, but I think you can slowly equalize, you know? So this is uh, probably the most important moment because after this, as you know, it's a blunder. And I just win material and. If I play accurately, I'll just win in the end. Okay? Who's next, guys?
I want to play Carlson again. Maybe I want to play Carlson again. All right, Carlson is next. Leandro, hey! Oh, sorry. Prison Mike, I missed your comment. I will play Pawn Holder again later. Don't worry, don't worry about that. Um, when did you discover that you wouldn't be a top 10 player? <laughs> Interesting question. I actually never thought about that. Well, came across me, but... I think I can still make it. You make me think about this. <laughs> Who knows? I don't have clear answers on these questions, you know? Just enjoying the way I play. But um, over time, I guess you will know your chances are decreasing or diminishing of becoming a top 10 player when you know you're stuck at a certain level, right? And you're not getting invited yet to tournaments, yeah. Um, when did I know? When, when other things happen in life, such as, you know, family, you know, I must say, seriously, you know, honestly, um, I have learned to, you know, accept that chess is not the only thing that matters in life. <laughs> Big surprise. <laughs> it is not. And, um, I have to pay attention to other things such as academics, you know, family, work, you know, relationships. These are things that matter. So you having friends here, you know, it's great building relationships. I think uh, being happy with your family and friends, I think that matters more than winning any tournaments. Don't you think? <laughs> because you could be winning a lot of tournaments, but uh, you have many or numerous enemies. You know, disturbed mind or lacking health okay it's uh, it's hard to enjoy you know the important things in life so other things happen i'm just being philosophical here right now <laughs> got me started hmm i think we could play solid f3 so I'll play solid play bishop e3 next and uh queen e2 and Place the rooks to the default. So this is more like a old Indian defense from my maybe Scotch Gambit. I took back the pawn that I gambited, and now it's uh, just a normal, normal game with uh, more space adventure. White. Okay, I see what he's doing. Knight a5 attacking my bishop. If I go bishop b3, c5, possible c4, then it's going to try my bishop. bishop. So I'm going to play more carefully here. Make sure he's not trapping any of, my, any of my pieces. He's trying to go dynamic and tricky because he knows his worst positionally. If you're worst positionally, you can't just sit. Or can you? You don't want to sit that. You don't want to sit and do nothing. Okay? It's going to be torture. Your opponent... It's just gonna tear down at your pieces. Start getting his pieces out, pushing his pawns closer to your territory. I'm gonna crush you, smash you, until you run out of space, air to breathe. It has happened before, okay? Just ask Anatoly Karpov. Okay, what does he want? He wants the square on hmm, c4. Bishop e3, knight c4. Okay, he's gonna get something. Bishop e3, I'm thinking about knight c4. But you know what, guys? I'm thinking this bishop, once again, could belong to the diagonal a1, a3. Okay. Plus, I'm restricting his knight on a5. I'm actually sort of killing two pieces. I know I'm killing one. I'm killing the knight on a5, okay? And then, now the bishop on e6. Bishop on e6 is another diagonal, c8, h3, that's why I said kinda. But still, these pieces don't look like they have a future, okay? So, 
That's why I give an advantage to White from, from an outsider perspective. I'm just looking at this. Okay, he's gonna go wild. He's, he's going active now. I don't have much choice here. If I go knight b5, a6, he's gonna push me back. So I will just. Hmm, knight f5, I give up the center. Knight f5, I can gain the bishop pair, guys. Bishop f5, e f5, but d5. You guys see that? d5, he takes whole center. I don't wanna give him anything. If you guys have an advantage, my number one rule, okay, or tip, is don't give your opponent counterplay. Got that? So right here, looks like you could gain counterplay by how? D5. Possible, you know? So I'm looking at ideas like E5. I'm gonna do a positional pawn sack. We're going positional today, classical style, right? So I'm gonna play like Petrosian. <laughs> Petrosian. So I destroy spawn structure. Um, sacrificing my okay. My pawn, but now he wants D4. So yeah, I'm keeping track of his counterplay, but no, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. See, I can attack easily attack these pawns because they're very weak. And when I get back one of these pawns, I will come out on top because. Weak pawns are a long-term advantage. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Looks suspicious to me. I can go... Hmm. I want to go 94, 93, queen b8, 8, oh, rook fc1, then I can attack this pawn on e5, knight c6. I will share with you all my analysis later. Don't worry. Don't you worry, just be happy. Oh, sorry, once again, a random song. I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna keep the tension. Can I keep the tension? No, I can't, actually, I can't. I'm just gonna take, keep it simple. Keep it simple, guys. I'm better here. So, I'm glad to, hmm. Maybe not the best, but let's go. I have more active pieces, and what else is my advantage? The game has changed. It has transformed. Transformers. It's now Transformers, guys. What's my plan now? What's my plan? I know my plan. Develop. Finish development and attack weaknesses. Finish development and attack weaknesses. That's the best way, guys. The best way to go. That's right. Yo, yo, yo. Solido? No. I think I'm C3, but... Focus, focus. We gotta focus. Focus on the task at hand, which is to... Analyze lines. Okay. Gain space. Use your advantage. Kill the counterplay. That's what you do if you wanna play well. Okay, all right. Find some good squares for your pieces. Okay, improve your pieces, and of course, manage your time well. Manage your time well. So I'm just tricking him, and he's actually calculating it. You don't want to lose some time, you know. Slightly better position, or better position for that matter. The bishop is better in what? In open positions. Okay, and now I'm gonna develop my rook. So I got my... My pawn storm going. I'm just putting pressure. That's all. I am just putting pressure. That's all I'm doing. And now I'm gonna double up rook e2 or rook e4. Watch out for his trick. You guys see his trick? You might have some. D4, D3, D4, D3, C, D, and Knight D4. That's what is maybe cooking. But the rock is cooking something else. I'm sorry. It's Blitz. Thank you, Carlson Super Light. Thank you very much for playing a game with me. Okay? And for creating this game. It's just positional, simple game. We haven't had this in a while. We've always been seeing crazy attacks with a chess pac man. So we're just, you know, chilling and uh, calming down.
this episode. So, the line, the best line here, if you want to know, guys, and what Grandmasters play is this, the best line. Okay, it's a testing way. It's either you hold on to your pawns or bishop c5. That's how you're going to challenge me. Or you can also develop and attack this e pawn. And then I'll go here. It is the line, just in case, in case you're wondering. D5 this is the main line, okay? I remember in the Olympiad, um, Gawain Jones, Grandmaster Gawain Jones from um, England, won a game against uh, Nagic, okay? So, Jababa Badur is one of the guys who was also playing this, so look it up yourself, guys. Many games online in the database here. He didn't go for this, he just went for a sideline, we can call it, and just a more... That's a more calm, but passive, solid, but passive. So there's always that risk, okay? Just look at how his pieces are, like bishop e7, bishop, bishop c8 can come out to g4, but I'm still not sure if it has a stable square. Bishop on f8, I believe, belongs to the h8, a1 diagonal. So I would consider, consider, consider <laughs> g6. But in this case, it is a bad move because of the tactic. Can you guys see the tactic? You may need a minute here. Or not. Knight takes c6, bc6, e5. Okay? It's typical tactic. Tactics trainer. Go do more tactic sessions with Master Sopico. Tactic, tactical Master Sopico. Alright? She will teach you all this in another show. So here we go, I'm just developing. Why do I play f3? Of course I want to bolster up my center, e4. I also want to play bishop e3. Unfortunately, he could play knight g4. Okay? Play g4, so I'm preventing this. I also like to play h3, it's also possible, but f3 accomplishes two things. I protect my center and prevent and prepares bishop e3. Okay, knight, it's alright. I think Lasker would have played bishop d7 or what is the principle here's another tip for today's episode if you are lacking space okay if you're cramped you have to keep or trade pieces keep right no <laughs> trade it's trade because think about it if you're in a room in your best small bedroom, if your bedroom is small, and you invite all your friends, say 20 guys in there. How does it feel? Okay. If you want more room and air to breathe, you're gonna kick them out or ask them to go home nicely. Right? That's the way it is. So that's what you're doing here. You're getting rid of the knight, some pieces, maybe you wanna get rid of your bishop, right? And wanna make sure there's no tactics along the way. And I think that's the best way to proceed. But by keeping the pieces, okay, you keep yourself cramped and all the other guys in there looking for air gasping for air to breathe b3 i think is nice but just as good probably as bishop b3 but i was calculating all this it's, it's not necessary you know it's just a trap if you guys want to know what i was thinking i take c6 and the knight c4 hangs but you know he doesn't have to take the b2 pawn as i said before chess is not checker so you could probably go c6 Get some room to for, for your queen. Room to breathe, okay? And then you go not queen e c7, rook d8, rook e8. In the game, he didn't get much room. b3, c5, take, take. I gained the bishop pair. What I was saying during the game is knight f5. Look at this, guys. Okay? Take, take. Point holder, stay. Hang in there. I'm coming for you. d5, okay? He gets play in the center for sure okay so i think here maybe i'm just slightly better maybe i didn't need to do that so i was thinking guys this is an interesting idea queen d4 check ah didn't think of that huh using this d4 square it's a cool idea i think and now i want you to harmonize your pieces start harmonizing your pieces you see i like this or maybe play rook d8 first and I think you're making it hard for me at least. Maybe I still have advantage, but maybe not. And then you could go e4. It's possible, huh? 
Awesome. These are just some ideas I was going through my mind. Um, I, I was considering this, sure, but I have to be accurate here. But it's Blitz. I don't have time here. Much time here. Rook C1. And sure, I'm holding, but uh, so is he. I have a bishop pair, but I can't quite see uh, a direct way to continue here. Good way to continue. Probably, probably this. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's pretty much it. I think those are the main ideas. And after this, it's just a simple position, and I develop and put pressure. I'm controlling his pawns on the queen side. Bishop is more active, and pawns on the king side could push later. Next up. All right, pawn holder. Before you sleep. Thank you for being so dedicated and staying up over there, wherever you are. We're going to play again. And then, Rockero and the other guys, I will play you next. Devil70, hello, welcome to the sixth episode of the Pac-Man Show. Okay, I think I accepted. I believe I did. It's coming. Just wait, guys. Roland298, welcome to the show. I'm not sure I've seen you before. So, let's go. Oh, sorry, I'm white again. So, let's do D4. Let's play something interesting. An interesting uh, Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit is my, you know, classical pet opening. Slav, let's go for this. Yes. D5, Knight F3. I could have gone E3. I've been studying E3 a lot. Um, it's good. G3. I think we'll go G3. Let's go for this. I like the G3 systems a lot. Okay, it becomes basically like a Catalan. Okay. Cross and Super Light, thank you very much for playing. You did well. You tried your best. Then that's what matters. Okay. Okay. C4 and Castle. So there's plenty of theory here. Okay. Bishop B4. I've never seen this. What does he want? He wants to prevent e4. Bishop c3, b3, knight takes c4. Only hangs a pawn. No compensation. Well, I'm going to play for that. I'm going to renew my threat. Renew my threat e4. I'm comfortable with my position. Maybe he is as well, but I like this style of sacking a pawn, pawn temporarily and uh, seizing space in the center. Yeah, I'm really liking my position now. As you can see, I'm creating a lot of holes in his position. Okay. Plenty of holes in his position. So my pieces are coming once again. This resembles one of the game, one of the games that we played uh, earlier, right? All right, guys. Okay. I don't see a square for the bishop, so maybe I can push him back first. I kind of like this somehow. Just my intuition telling me d6 square could come in handy. And now, I think I could go cause some danger around this king. Dark cloud, you know, collecting around this king here. Mm-hmm. Wow, look at that. Look at this, guys. Oh, my goodness. I don't know about you, but that's crazy. I'm thinking of knight f6, knight f6, uh, ef6, knight f6. Okay, he's fine. I'm also thinking of um, something else. <laughs> hmm, it's really interesting. I could also play h4. What do you guys think? Will everything be all right? Will everything be all right? That is the question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think we'll play sound chess. Sound chess, guys. We're going to take advantage of the fact that he has weakened his king's head pawn. That's what we gain. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Control the center, guys. I said all the time. Control the center. Do we have time? 
I think we have time. Control the center. That's right. Okay, here we go. This is the attack now. We're coming for you, King. King o King O. So when you're attacking, it's essential that you take good control of your center because the defend the defender is attacking where he's hitting where? He's hitting on the center. In the center. So he has ideas like what? A five. I see that. So I'm just slowly bringing my pieces to the party. Like I said, you just have to bring the piece to the party. That's all you need to do. Oh, I didn't know about this. Ooh, I'm not sure about this. I think, hmm, I don't know. He's just taking his time. Hmm, maybe, maybe there is something here. I think I can take now, can't I? Hmm. Ah. Calculating, 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 calculating. Bop, 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 bop. Oh, I found an idea. If you're lacking for a plan, okay? You have to look for. One breaks. Maybe this is what he missed. So one breaks. This is crazy attack, guys. I don't know about you, but this is coming. One breaks. Hmm. I don't care. Let's go. Let us go to where no man has ever been. Take, 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 take. CD4, Knight of Six. Six, Chief Six, Chief Six, Chief Six. Hmm, that's already, that's already. G6, possibly. GH6, G6, H7, H7. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, maybe, maybe there's something else. Maybe there's something else. Maybe there's something else. Yeah, I believe in this. I totally believe in this. Do you believe in magic? That's my question. Whoa. Whoa. I don't know about that. But. I don't know. I'm just. Cruising here. So who is the hero here? I think the hero will be the knight on h3 the unsung hero okay the unsung hero is the knight on h3 that's the killer here because he's coming to town he's coming to party or maybe i can choose the bishop on c1 to be the hero they say there's a hero to save us okay bishop h6 then bishop g7 okay and the attack is crashing through hello everyone Okay, Chess Ninja is here in the house. Welcome. Co fight. Hello. Welcome to the show. Unfortunately, you can't play me. <laughs> Please be a premium member and play. Challenge the Grandmasters and learn from your mistakes. I'm sorry to hear that you think some people are not jobs. It's kind of unfair, you know. You haven't even known them, right? Or maybe, maybe you're kidding, right? Maybe he's just kidding, okay? Some people was just in a, you know, silly mood, okay? But the chess back man is not. He is in a serious crushing mood. And right now the attack is just uh, almost irresistible, I would say. Okay, thank you, pawn holder. Thank you. Let's do a rematch, but first things first, to learn from our mistakes. So, you guys saw it's a Slav G3, okay? And normally they play B5, Bishop E7, Bishop B4 is a pretty active move. 
forgot exactly how to play this. I'm just going standard Catalan style. Once again. I didn't like the look of this because I didn't think I have enough composition. But now that I'm looking at it again, I may have. What is the composition? Hello. There's two pawns, four more active pieces, and safer king. This king isn't safe. So possibly playable, maybe quicker. But what happened in the game is pretty pleasant. I don't know. I like to analyze it first myself before checking the engine. Maybe engine thinks it's okay, but you know what? I have to share with you. Engines usually underestimate attacks, you know, because they're the best defenders. They see a lot of resources. The real question is, can your opponent see all those resources? So it's important to be practical. If you think a move may not necessarily be best, but if it gives, if it gives a lot of problems for opponent, makes him calculate a lot, that could very well be the best way to go. And here, A3, like I said, I wasn't sure, right? I just wanted to seize the C5 and uh, uh, D6 square. If I didn't play A3, I probably, I was thinking about this, guys. Don't get me wrong, I considered this, so that A6, Queen, H7, mate. But then I noticed this, F5. Of course, he's not going to go G6. It's too weakening. Look at the dark squares, and this bishop is missing in action. I'll play h4, I'll play ante4, bishop, H, bishop g5. So most likely he will go f5. Takes. He takes. I think it's a pretty pleasant position, actually. And this is weak. Yeah. So he has to stay here, but this is still weak. Yeah, it's pretty... Strong compensation. So what if he takes the other way? Then it's still possible, right? Then I'm gonna get this because this only wins me a piece. Um, possibly the best is G takes, but then the question comes: He he's weakening his king long term. So maybe I'll play knight e4. You know, all this has to be calculated and taken into account before you engage in this. But who knows, maybe his pawns now will count. Uh, he has to, of course, simplify. Hmm. I still have compensation for sure. I mean, I have b3 ideas, bishop h6, and rook e1. So definitely, maybe this is objectively, objectively a better way to go. I played a3, knight e g5. I assume that he's going to go f5, because I, this is part of my plan, you know. And then, but actually it's... Not so easy to break. So similar to what I saw earlier, but my idea was to take back the pawn now and get interest. Okay. And now I think e6 is easier to attack than d4. And at least I get some pressure. I get some pressure. But that could be equal actually because d4. d4 is lacking some protection. So these are just my thoughts. And the knight d6 is possible too, but especially 7 I'm not sure about that. So... I don't know. We have to analyze this. Hold on. See, so guys, I'm not. So, I'm not so sure. I'm not so. Let's not be quick to draw conclusions. Ooh, look at that. So it is still playable. So always check, guys. Hmm. Always check. But this knight is out of action. Okay. This is a playable position. Very playable. So now he plays a six. Very resourceful. This one. Because you would think that. Oh, this is gonna be a discovery. Right. Too bad. Too bad it's not working okay it won't be enough okay and i think i just lose my initiative black comes out on top here because i don't gain anything just weak pawn on d4 and scattered pieces therefore no tactics i considered for a minute knight h7 okay of course it's not gonna take seven and then this, this knight i've seen it in the french in some other openings you know if i you could take part in the attack but nothing is working so far Nothing is working, unfortunately, guys. Nothing is working. Trust me. <laughs> Nothing is working, okay? So, unfortunately, he has enough defenses. That's why I played normal, solid chess, knight h3. So, like I said, during the game, I provoked h6, the weakening, okay? I went knight h3 because I was aiming for h5. Sometimes, sometime down the road, somewhere down the road, I will go knight f4, knight h5, okay? 
and now he let me realize my dream i think the best way to go for black if i was playing is break create the counterplay in the center right away the principle is if you're under attack on the flank or you know your opponent is going to attack you you want to strike in the middle and this is uh very evident here and look at this not only do you open up the center and create activity there you're also trading pieces off along the way and i have to think about trading because this one is looking looking dubious okay okay and uh maybe i will not do that i'm thinking of sacrificing but this is very risky so c5 is i believe is the right way to go i felt it and when i saw a5 it's a little hairy and uh questionable because what is he doing sure he's developing but he is giving me time to attack you see all these moves gave me time to create threats or to you know conjure something up uh, almost out of nothing uh, but if it was quicker i think i would have lost this game but such is the game you have to see different resources okay 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 point holder let's go let's go sorry guys keep waiting I'm gonna go with pawn holder one more time. Let's be black this time, right? You'd be white, pawn holder. Good job. Good job, server. Good job. Let's go. Let's hit it. Um Let's go with my favorite. <laughs> Sleep is overrated, someone says. That's just an expression. I believe we need sleep. That was a poor game. Who are you? You're a fan of Katerina Doliskova. Okay. <laughs> that was a poor game. Why is it poor? Why is it poor? I want to know why. So that we can improve. So we can improve, you know? Play more aggressive. That's right. Play more aggressive. We're gonna do that today. Boom! That's just a boom. I think it's a good move because it stops all the counterplay. Okay. That's all. So he's playing normal chess. He's just developing. I'm also developing with a purpose. More purpose. So he's also developing. Okay. He got it. He's got it. And now my purpose it can now be seen. So I'm developing to take away one of his advantages, which is, as you know, the bishop pair. Okay. I should be happy. I'm content here because um, if we go to an end game, I will have the upper hand because I have weaknesses on the C file. There are double pawns. And uh, yeah, I'm just playing uh, my lines and uh, just typical ideas in this. Uh, French defense, queen a5, queen a4 variant of the win hour. Uh, it became popular lately. A lot of super GMs are playing it, so check it out. And uh, it's very uh, double edge. Sometimes really positional too, because we can reach close positions, you know. And a lot of maneuvering. White usually attacks on the king side, and black rates play on the other side of the board. You see, what is he doing now? Hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna take my time and create harmony among my pieces. That's the key. You have to create harmony. He wants queen on g5, I guess. I'm not sure what he's doing on c1. Ah, I see now. I see now. I see now. So maybe I can go, oh, I have an interesting idea here. No, I think it's it's just good. I'll play a chicks to prevent any knight g5s, aggressions. Rook b1, what does he want? Nothing much. Hmm. I'm just developing. I don't see any real threats. I'm improving my pieces. Okay, now h6 uh, bothering us a little bit here. Yeah, it's gonna be bothering us a little bit. But you know what? I have a wacky idea. It's 
I think it's playable though. Mm, how about let's get creative? Let's get creative. Ooh, this is something new in the French. I don't see a way for him to attack me, so I'm gonna go for it. Casting by hand. Whoa, there you go, guys. Casting by hand. I'm gonna go King F8, King G8. So just position on chess. And uh, maintain the tension and all that. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, using my advantage to the max, which is uh, better piece placement, and uh, I have a clear cut plan. What's my clear cut plan? Attack the weaknesses on C3 and C2. That's all I can give you for now. You know, in the end game, I could just keep my king. On, the, on e7 and now he's going rook e3 I'm not sure what he's doing next but I'm coming for the queen so he wants to attack me somehow some way but what do I want to attack the queen I want to attack the queen I want the trade of pieces you know I want the trade of pieces that's right I'm going after the pawns So control, control the position. So just solid positional chess. I'm attacking the weaknesses and I'm not sure what he's doing now. Um, I'm just building up here, building up, building up, building up and just putting my pieces on good squares. So someone said it wasn't a nice, nice game last time. I hope this was, this is now a nice game because I'm really just, you know, playing solid position, positional chess here, okay? I don't know what he can do now. Just solido. Okay. And now I go here and let's play some end games. So I'm not, I'm not seeing any plans. I'm going to take the C3 and A3 if he doesn't want to trade of Queens. And uh, yeah, seems like I'm just taking the spawn. You know what? Let's keep it simple. Huh? Take it. Keep it simple. <laughs> I'll keep it simple. Take it. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but this looks like it's happening now. It's happening. It's happening. Check. And now, what is happening? The queen trades. Okay. Or the pieces being traded off okay so that's what's happening here and I'm sorry to say that there's no counterplay there's no clear compensation for um, the material advantage that now black has and I believe it's just a matter of technique matter of time until we get a winning position now I mean this could be a winning position already because there's no clear competition. Okay, fair trade. And now, king, march. On the way, march to the queen side and win with the pass pawns. Okay. Use the advantages that you have. Nothing fancy, just simple play. Okay. Use the advantage of these pawns pushing ramming um, we don't need much technique because it's a material advantage okay slowly but surely push the pawns no need to rush have you ever heard of that principle guys do not rush take your time Impu improve your position to the max to the utmost of your ability So, Klitschko, Klitschko is a great boxer, yeah. So, boom! Gives a Julio to tired tonight. I'm sorry! I'm sorry, bond holder. <laughs> I can tell, you're probably tired. Get some rest, get some good rest, and uh, prep, prep a tricky line so you can catch me next time, huh? <laughs> but thank you. 
Thank you for coming out. What dedication, you know, you stayed up and just to play and to entertain everybody. And um, everyone, give a round of applause to Paul Holder. Paul Holder, you are always welcome to the show. Paul Holder, boom, boom, pack. Yes, that's for you. Not at you, for you. And for all the fans out here. Smugs 2006. Tempest the 18, Don G, Carl Nearing. Wow, you guys mixed out. You guys are the rock. You guys have been here for a long time and still going on, wanting to play. Let's take the next one. I know it's time's up, but you know, I want to show. I want to show guys how much I appreciate you, your interest in the game and how much you want to learn. So I'm going to take... Uh, Roland, possibly in Chess Ninja, before I go. But before that, let's go over the game, okay? This is just a simple game, easy to understand. We know where, as I mentioned earlier, the clear-cut plan is to trade my bad bishop for his good bishop, okay? And I believe the theory says here rook b1, okay? Some books say here, and then c4, something like that, okay? Or c4 right away, so something to check it out. But here, black has a comfortable game. I'm just keeping my pieces well placed, pawn structure intact, get my king safe now, and now, you know, attack the pawns. Nothing, nothing fancy. Just going by the weaknesses, okay? The demands of the position. And I think here he was just helping me. I, I, it's difficult really to advise something good because there's no weaknesses to attack so if he wants a weakness to attack i would recommend here here's probably the critical moment i would recommend probably knight g5 it's an interesting line and if h6 maybe you can play with this what do you guys think pawn holder i'm sure will will like this so some attack here going on so maybe i should have played h6 right away also possible i've seen in other games is knight h3 and now what did we do you provoked you gave yourself a leeway and a path for your queen to come attack me later okay and maybe f4 is possible too you see that guys f4 possible but i don't like taking the square away from my knight so possibly better is this and then you also have to calculate of course um, if this works so things are not that easy but at least there is a direction of play for white you guys getting this okay so yeah this is just i'm just killing the counterplay okay and king e7 i really like it because there's no way for him to get at my king and i connect my rooks i finish development and uh probably another interesting way to move the game forward is knight b6 just getting the knight in front of the weak pawn remember since dimzovich what did we learn the isolated pawn is weak itself, but also the square in front of it, okay? All right, so that should do it. That lesson should do it for, for this one, okay? So PG91, ooh, some challenges. I'll take you, but I promise some other guys um, I will play them. So I know um, Rockero came out. Yes. That's right, Rockero. I appreciate that and it's now your chance Rockero of course I promise that we will play here we go let's play the French or maybe e5 how about e5 e5 uh, don't really play this but it's the most classical open you cannot get more classical and solid than the Euro Lopez so let's play some standard lines. I've been studying, uh, ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly what to do. To, I'm gonna play more active, like I told you guys. Principled and active. It doesn't have to be boring and dry. So active because I'm controlling the center, okay? Preventing D4 too. That's what I like about this. Okay. So, what's next? What's next is what's next. 
He may go... I have a feeling he's gonna go d4 later, after d1. I can sense it. But if not, then he will have to go a4, d3, the slow way. d3, bishop e3, or knight bd2, rook e1, knight f1, you know. Okay, he's uh, quite ambitious here. He's quite ambitious, okay? I must say, he's quite ambitious. So, I think we can be ambitious. This is, this is, it's getting late, you know? <laughs> we want some action. I like this pin because his bishop is missing in action. Now, I would recommend bishop d5 later on, but this one is uh, quite tricky for white. Okay? I'm just saying it out loud now. Giving a warning. He's thinking about g4 and then d4, but g4 and then bishop g6. Or maybe knight takes g4. A la Carlson. Yes. I reserved plenty of energy tonight for this episode, only for you guys to make sure you are learning from the games being played. Okay? Yes, I know there's plenty of songs, guys. Unfortunately, we cannot sing songs tonight. <laughs> okay, how can we improve the position here? I think I could uh, break right now. I just want to break free because my pieces are all active and uh, I think I can break free now. Maybe not because there is Bishop G5. I forgot to take that into account. Mm. I should be more careful about my pawn breaks. Bishop G5 is a good move, guys. If he sees this, then we're talking about me looking for equality or just being more safe this principle so-called principle move is a little hasty d6 i think it could be prepared with um eight chicks you know devil 70 yes i will play you but i also want to play um we need to play tempestly you know Smugs, that's right. I need to play you as well. And this is a, a lot of games here, a lot of games. So, hmm, I'm gonna take you out because they're pretty important. And now I think I could go. Hmm. Keep the tension. Try. I've seen Carlson play this. Um, D4. Gain space. I know your bishop is active, but I can also always play knight e5, c5, you know? So I still got space here. Don't forget, I'm still under control. Things are still under control here. What I like about this position is that the f4 is now soft and I get targeted. So I'm gonna play like cross in here. Magnifico style! Magnifico style. Bye, Smugs. Smugs. Okay, since you have to leave, I will put you on the list for next time. Okay, Smugs? I promise. You'll be next. Okay? So he's teasing me. And he's daring me to take it. Bye, Smugs. You'll be next. Okay? Today, the guys got it. McFowl got to play. If Brian was here, I would have played him as well. Hmm. Cheers, Smugs, tell you. Not next week, because I'll be playing the Asian Continental Championships. So it will have to be next episode when I get back, okay? You the man, Smugs. You the man. Keep rocking. Keep rocking. We like you here. We love you here. What am I talking about? We love you here, right? <laughs> okay, I need my rook. You're the man. You have a good rest. I know you've been tired. It's been it's been a long time here. Uh, appreciate your presence here. Present Mike, to answer your question, why no karaoke today? Okay? Someone said, why no karaoke? Why no singing? Because this episode is dedicated 
for the serious banner blitz fans you know i hear a lot of feedback and comments asking for no explanations this and that you know we have to listen kind of get tired of them you know kind of getting, getting tired of them so we have to you know pay attention to what they're saying so we're doing traditional way that's all i'm saying just traditional 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 style you know we could go uh be patient be patient that's the key here right guys be patience be patience be patient solid i could play rook d8 as well that's right i don't know why i didn't do that but uh just keeping it solid okay we're trying to tone down mellow out the uh the the we're gonna mel we're mellowing out the the craziness it's getting out of control okay now he's traded some pawns but i got all my pieces active so something's about to happen some some, some attack is looming okay it's approaching his king all right while he's thinking i'm gonna answer some questions here someone asked where are you going okay i'm going to the asian continental championships which will be held in china okay but first i go to philippines okay to do some uh training yes and a uh, little bit of that a little bit of this and that and then eventually in china to bring the boom boom pack over in china right okay he's coming i'm also coming guys he's coming with his rooks on the g file but I think his h3 pawn is weaker. Don't you agree? And I'm honing down, coming down on it. And it's happening right here, right now, live at Chess24 Nation. Boom, boom, pack. Rock Hero, you helped me rock this game. Thank you very much for participating, coming out for the show. Okay, guys. Critical moment, like I said, every game we're gonna learn from it. I think you guys heard me think out loud. A standard plan such as d3 won't hurt. And then rookie one and be d2. Just develop. Normally they play also play uh, a4, okay? And then rookie one, knight f1, just slow, slow approach would do. Rook d1 seems ambitious because sure you want to take the center but what about the e pawn okay normally the rook is placed on the e file and the other rook queen side rook could go to d file but look if i if i go no i cannot go i can go rook e8 see i'm also preventing d4 okay oh well of course you have to calculate the tactics right and if you go now knight g5 i have ideas like d5 so now i'm opening up the game with my pieces better placed so i think i'm i'm well placed here so could be crazy this one who knows but you have to calculate but it seems like i should have enough resources to hold my position here my pieces are better placed so once again this looks uh, questionable already h3 still good okay see he changed his plan because d4 is not possible because of the pin this one we can explore interesting i was planning this and now defending the f3 knight but i have an attack here a dangerous one of this a dangerous one so he might not want to do this um king f2 possibly but still dangerous okay he has to really be careful another idea i have is king h8 and f5 still very dangerous okay um that's why he, he decided to go here i should have played h6 just the best move objectively the best okay and now i think i made a mistake okay oh a slight mistake because this one should give white some initiative already I'm trying to be objective here i think white's already better here i feel like maybe i have to play d4 right maybe i have to play d4 but it's a little questionable for me because maybe you have a forcing line already yeah you do have a forcing line so 
and why it's better for sure i'm pretty sure unfortunately he played passive and took it out and d4 i think is a good move although i give you a diagonal open diagonal you're not doing much with it so this is really awkward okay guys really awkward um queen d2 is a bad move queen e2 should have been played i don't see anything wrong with this okay and now i cannot really take this because you know i'm just giving control i'm just giving up my center so now i just play probably i'm think i was thinking of knight e7 knight g6 that kind of stuff or king h8 to prepare the pawn break f7 f5 later so that's the key here after this it's just positionally lost because how can you fix your pawn structure how can you protect your dark grace that's the key it's either you have a dark screen bishop or have, you have a knight on e2 and this is far from happening and it's just a matter of time before i seize those weak spots all right next someone said i know it's time but i gotta i gotta play tempest lee and devil 70 let's go tempest lee last two last two let's go tempest lee last two there you go carlos i'm sorry you came in late the request came in late i'll have to get you in line for next time okay don't worry you will get your turn there will be many more episodes i hope we're hoping guys okay we're playing the classical nimzo classical opening nimzo indian um we can go now king's gambit decline or semislav right okay Oh my goodness, guys, it's 8.55, it's 9, I haven't had my dinner yet. I didn't know it's this late already, okay? Um, I have family waiting for me out here, out of this room, and I need to attend to them as well. I hope you understand, Tempestly, I have to announce, will be the last one. And for the rest, get in line, send me a note, a message, okay? Don't be afraid. Send me a note. And um, I'll be more than willing to answer to you. Or if you have any questions, give you, give you some answers or tips. And uh, let you know when the next episode will be. Alrighty. So it's pretty interesting. It's been a pretty interesting uh, night. interesting games here lots of ideas we can learn from don g don g again with the shout outs who doesn't like don g <laughs> yeah hopefully there there will be more episodes in the future we'll uh, we'll bring back the singing you know only a little bit all right but not too much okay but definitely we have to keep learning from our mistakes keep the lessons the going over of games because this will benefit only you guys the premium members you know um the bander fans and of course the players themselves more importantly the players because they're the ones experiencing and playing the moves and seeing the improvements afterwards so this is a a line of the Nimzo Indian Rubinstein from uh, see from Nimzo to Queen's Gambit decline of uh, Ragozin into back to Nimzo again. It's quite tricky. And now it's a rare line of the Rubinstein used to be played by uh, Mihai Talarat. I prefer Bishop D3, but maybe he's concerned about E5. Carl, thank you very much as well for appreciating it. Um, yes, that is pretty cool. I did not know that you have a daughter-in-law in the Philippines. That's very uh, curious to know. Thank you. Um, maybe we'll meet someday in the Philippines eh, whenever I visit there. <laughs> President Mike, don't worry. I will sing for you. I'll come up with a song for you in the near future. Prison Mike, Prison Mike. Tell me all your interests and all your favorite quotes. Maybe we'll, we can put it all in, in the lyrics. All right? All right, guys. Time to focus on the game. This is the critical moment right here. Why do I say that? 
We have to look for a plan. Both sides have almost developed. Just the rooks, right? Almost developed. I have to look for a plan. So, where's the weaknesses? Not so much weaknesses here. Both sides are solid. I may have slight weakness on the queen side, but nothing clear. Nothing clear. But you have to also ask, what are the weak pieces? Well, of course, which side is weaker, you know? But the pieces, I notice his, his is more passive. A little more passive. And not sure yet where he's, he wants to direct his attack. I, on the other hand, have pieces placed on optimal squares. Except the knight on c6. Knight on c6 could be better because it's blocking my bishop on b7. Look at my raking two bishops on d6 and b7. It's begging to be used. And it's time to do that. We're opening up the center and giving more freedom for pieces. I explained that in one of my past episodes. Pawn breaks frees up your pieces, opens up lines, okay? Exposes weaknesses even more. So that's what I'm doing here. His king, follow me now. D5, 95, 95, bishop takes e5. His king suddenly is feeling insecure because he's lacking some defenders. Most of his pieces now, after that, in, at the end of that line, are all on the queen side. Except for the bishop on e2, but it is quite important. That bishop on e2 is keeping my knight away from g4. So that is my only problem. But it's actually the least of my problems. He has bigger problems here because I'm about to open up the game for my pieces. I'm also threatening to, excuse me, give him a weakness on the d4. All right. Who knows? Maybe I can play... Rook e8, e4, gain more space. All right, he's the one who changed the structure. Okay, watch out, watch for this, guys. Watch out. Is there, there any tactics? No, we'll play normally. Normal red goes in, okay? And then he may go e4. But here's the thing. I can go c6. I like c6. I like the pawn break c6, okay? But then he's going to go h6. Oh, he's going to go, hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna play more solid. Like I said, classical. Classical stat. So c6, d6, c6, c6, I'm thinking about my bishop g5. That could be bothersome. I don't want any pins, any counterplay from him. We want it all us. All me, they say. All me, all you, all us. All the play, we want it to be on our side. So, we're just fending off, warding off all these. Uh, future threats and ideas he may have so that we will have less problems later on you hear me before i'm not sure what is threatening pre preventing bishop c5 maybe i don't know he's not threatening anything so real threat ghost threat ghost threat c6 another p b and j pawn break and jamming Pawn break and jamming. Not peanut butter and jelly. Okay, now everything's ready. I think my pieces are better placed. And now, check this out, guys. I can play knight d4. Quite unpleasant to me. Quite unpleasant to me. Because now, if he takes e d4, e it's opening up all my pieces once again. Especially the bishops. Very strong bishops here. See, that he takes this line go for this line or give up the bishop bear i'm not sure if i should take the bishop bear here should i Qu say queen d3 knight takes c2 yeah i'll take the bishop bear it's a bishop bear mm -hmm. yeah i'll take the bishop bear okay and he would probably want to play bishop e3 so i will prevent it so once again guys i'm just following his next move Possible move. So he still wants to play bishop. Okay, probably, possibly. So maybe I'll go here, play solid. Solido! Go get my pieces out. It's a simple game. And now, maybe I can even pressure him. Try to pressure him like this. Okay. Pressure the e-pawn. He's gonna go 92, make him passive. And then slowly, slowly gaining from each move. Oh, who knows? What What do you know? Um, 
he's already in time trouble. I'm sorry, he needs plenty of time here. Unfortunately, he is under much pressure here and he just hung a rook at the piece. Thank you, Tempest Lee, for playing. Everybody, give Tempest Lee a warm welcome in the show, in the chats. And uh, we look forward to playing him again, right? Right, everyone? Okay. We're gonna do our last replay and learning from the game against Tempest Lee. Tempest Lee, what do you think? Um, what do you think you went wrong? Mm, maybe middle game because the opening is fine. Okay, if you look up my game against Chucky, uh, Mr. Ivanchuk, Ivanchuk played this. I would recommend Queen C2, okay? And dead casting and then E3. It's really interesting. Or maybe what you can do is Bishop D3, it's normal, and then Queen C2. Because one of the ideas actually I didn't do is also Bishop takes you to give you weakness, okay? And attack you on the light squares over in the queen side. You guys see that? You see that bind? This I have a pawn break. It's gonna be ugly for you. So you wanna take, take, and now I have a bind on the light square. So maybe you have to play this and bishop b2, but I will clamp down on these squares and that's my counterplay. And now my pawn break is rook c8, c5. You see that? So yeah, you want to prevent that by playing queen c2. So that's another plan. But I wanted to keep more pieces on the board and play some more dynamic. b5 and I got some harmony. I was thinking here maybe it's more active for you to play hmm. bishop d3. Because I'm not sure this is working. I have to be careful here. Sure, I'm getting the bishop pair, but you're also destroying my king side. So, I don't think this is entirely correct for me. You can play e4 with the idea of knight d5, you know? This could be dangerous. a3, possibly, or rook c1. Now, the knight is hanging, and now you can trade some pieces. Look what's happening. I may have the bishop pair, but you have... You know, long-term competition in the form of my weak ones. And you are you have pressure, definitely pressure on the C file. So, not sure about this. So, I don't think I'm going to play E5. I think I'm going to prepare this. And now you could probably trade pieces. Kind of uh, relinquish or, you know, prevent me from creating pressure along this diagonal. And now I think you have a playable position. Okay. Another idea is that you just play Queen C2 and then Knight E4. You should be fine. So that's the key here. Once you go bishop e2, I started feeling more comfortable, more freedom for my pieces. Okay, so bishop d6. So I know it could be bothersome to face knight d4, but you know what? If you calculate it, it's not a real threat. So I think you could play rook d1. Look, just test it. It's not a real threat. I don't think you should be bothered by this. Okay. Another idea I have to share with you is that your, your, your plan should be on the queen side. Most of your pieces are there, and uh, I created slight weakening on the queen side. Therefore, such moves as a4 must be considered. Must be considered. And now, yeah, the question is where to go right now. Ideally, you want your knight on c4, but you can also place your knight on b3. Probably a little slow, but at least you have a direction of play. Understand? You know where you're going. Okay? You know where you're going. It's not like you're just waiting. It's uh, pleasant and dangerous to be just waiting and your opponent is doing something so that's what i saw there and then knight e7 you define the structure and now i have a clear plan of pawn break so you should be watching out for this i believe rook fd1 once again is the best move and it should be an equal game not claiming any edge here no it should be equal here um, now comfortable for black but also comfortable for you i think if you don't weaken anything should be fine i don't think this should bother you at all there's knight d5 okay so once again play principal chess and look for a plan you know where where are you creating pressure creating play where do you want to provoke weaknesses b4 is aimless you're not you know doing anything much no, nothing productive here so you gave me time that's what happens and now i'm able to create threats yeah it's difficult already and especially in time trouble you know it's going to be difficult to defend such positions because you have long-term disadvantage in the light squares and you have long-term advantage of the bishop pair. All right, everyone. I hope you guys benefited a lot from, okay, 
the games and the ideas that I shared with you. And I'd like to continue this for as long as I want, but all good things must come to an end. As they say, and it is true, we also have to rest and relax and enjoy the weekend. So thanks once again, everybody, for participating and challenging me and taking the time to learn and learn even more. I wish you all the best in your future games online and your tournaments. Until next episode, this is Julio Sadora signing out for Battle Blitz with the Chess Pack Man. Dan, 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 Dan. Peace out. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys.